The Harper government canceled the mandatory long-form census in 2010. Five years later, how has this affected the way Canadians go about their lives? And what do we need to know about our country? Here to tell us about the effect on business, government and research is Jan Kessel. She's president of Enveronics Analytics and we welcome you here to our studio. First of all, tell me about your business. What, do, what, what does your organization do? So we help businesses understand their consumers and understand markets. We bring data from a wide variety of sources, census and other kinds of government data, but also from private sector sources. And we assemble it into um, an integrated database about consumers in Canada. And we make it available to businesses and other organizations, along with some advice about how to use that data and how to do analytics. Okay, you don't have to name names, but who, what kinds of businesses are your clients? Well, we have about 300 clients in Canada right now. We're hmm. primarily focused in Canada. We work for banks, we work for insurance companies, telecoms, um, retailers, media organizations, government, not-for-profits and um, a wide variety of sort of consumer marketers, both large and small. Okay, when they canceled the long form census five years ago, do you remember your initial reaction? Oh, well, I wouldn't want to say it on TV. Go ahead. <laughs> my reaction was, oh my God, I can't believe they would do this. How the come? census is such a valuable asset to this country, both from a point of view of business and good government, and it's really the foundation for fact-based decision-making that we need for policy and for business to operate in Canada. What was so special about the kind of information it gathered? Well, the census is, every five years, gives us a benchmark about detailed characteristics about Canadians. Now, we still have a census. We have the short form, thank goodness for that, which gives us information about age and gender and uh, some of the family status. But the long form of the census is what gave us the rich contextual information about the um, immigrant communities, the socioeconomic status of Canadians, and the census, because it's a comprehensive survey, and when it was mandatory, it was a, a balanced, statistically valid survey, gave us detailed information for small areas. When we're talking about small areas here, we're talking about neighborhoods. We're not talking about Toronto or Barrie. We're talking about a neighborhood of a couple hundred households, and the census is really the only source for quality information at that spatial scale, and it's data about those neighborhoods that's really used very widely. But if memory serves, Jen, they used to ask things like, how many bathrooms in your house? Was that the kind of information that was useful to get? Well, actually, that was a story at the time, but there's not a question on the long-form census about bathrooms in your house. There are other questions about the size of the household and, and the, the housing structure, but most of the information that was collected on the long-form census was about socioeconomic status, income, education, uh, employment information, and information about ethnic uh, background, a lot of detailed information about the population. So how useful was the long-form census, since cancelled, on trying to get information, for example, on the state of poverty in a particular part of a city? Well, the long-form census is really the only reliable source to get information on income. And so if you want to understand income at small areas, at a, uh, which is what we need to look at neighborhoods, look at social services, look at schools, look at health care, then the census is critical to that exercise. So municipalities would have relied on it as well? Municipalities, social service organizations, boards of education would all rely on the long form census. Let's dive down even deeper. London Fire Services, two hours west of here. How would, um, how would the neighborhood data collected in the long-form census have helped them do their jobs? So the London uh, example, they were a client of ours. They still are. They use data from the census and data derived uh, from the census. So it's not just census data itself, but organizations like ourselves create a lot of other indicators. So for example, uh, current year indicators. So the census right now is from 2011. We have 2015 populations to deal with. So we create a demographic estimate for current year as well. We create a multi-dimensional characteristic called PRISM, which combines census-type characteristics into a segmentation system. So what we were able to do with the London Fire Department is take a lot of data that they had collected about fires and about different kinds of fires. And we were able to analyze the characteristics of households where fires broke out. And we were able to see that there were different kinds of socioeconomic demographic and lifestyle characteristics for different parts of the population and they resulted in different levels of incidence of fires. 
we were next able to link those data, which had come from the census, but were built into an ecosystem with other data sources. So we were able to give them information about what kinds of messages about safety and education would resonate with different populations. They used these data to provide new advertising campaigns, new education programs, new bus shelter ads. And they had a 22% reduction in the incidence of fire in the next year and the year after that by using these kinds of data to understand the demographics of their populations. And is the kind of data that was collected to help achieve those reductions in fires no longer con collected by StatsCan? Well, Stats Canada didn't release what I call the neighborhood data from the 2011 census. They've always had great procedures for ensuring the quality of data that they release, and they used the same procedures with the National Household Survey as after the 2011 collection. And they made the decision that that granular data at the neighborhood level didn't meet quality standards, so they couldn't release it. So we as a company, made the decision to try to create a surrogate for the census data that we're missing. And we called it Census Plus. And we, um, I say surrogate, but we don't mean by any, by any stretch of the imagination that it actually is as good as the census. But we have a staff of 100 people, and 30 of them have PhDs hmm. and master's degrees in statistics and geography. And they used as data sources, they used historical data, they looked at neighborhoods compared to their nearest neighbors. They looked at combinations of characteristics from the short form census and the National Household Survey and created a good data set, not all variables, because we only estimated the ones we felt confident about. But we created a, a substitute product for 2011 census that um, we think was the best, used best practices to create a good neighborhood view of demographics. And we needed to do that because it provides us with a base for all the other data work we do in building our prism segmentation system and building our current year demographics. So ironically, the cancellation of the mandatory long form census created a business opportunity for you. I wish. The truth is that we spent 13 uh, person years on fixing that um, data. And the census itself isn't a money maker for our company. It's the input to other products. Um, and mostly either the census or the census plus is something that firms or municipalities license for a very low fee. But the Harper government's so. a conservative government and cons I think his type of conservatism is such that if the private sector can do something uh, you know, as well as or cheaper than the public sector, then let them. So if part of the motive, and I don't know if this is the case, but part of the motive for canceling the mandatory long-form census was let's get the government out of this business and let the private sector do it, that's happened, hasn't it? Well, it didn't really happen because uh, we can't do it as well as. And we did what we could do after 2011, but one of the key things in terms of the methodology was to take advantage of past trends using good, solid census data from 2001 and 2006 looking at the relationship between what we called the short form and the long form in 2011 and seeing what that meant for neighborhoods in, or in 2000, and, the relationship in 2006 and seeing what that meant in 2011. It's harder to do that as time goes out. So number one, we didn't make money. It was a loss leader for us, but we had to do it because we wanted good, as good quality data as we could get. And number two, it's gonna be harder and harder to do that. The business community needs solid census data in order for firms like ourselves to create data about consumers. <laughs> consumers have a lot of power these days. So just speaking from a marketing point of view alone, consumers want brands to know them. They know a lot about you know, what I buy from them or what social uh, media sites I go to, but they don't always know the basics about my income, my socioeconomic status, whether I'm a mother or a grandmother. So firms need those kinds of data, and the census has been traditionally the way that those data are aggregated for gover for, from government for business use in Canada. In your view, do we need the mandatory long-form census reinstated? Absolutely. It's essential not only for business, but also for good government. There's no other source for social service organizations to understand what's happening in neighborhoods, to understand poverty, to plan for education, to plan for health care, long-term health care, aging in place. These are all very granular local community issues where demographics make a big difference. And we will always strive in the business community and the statistical community 
to do the best with what we have. But the long form census as a mandatory program is essential for us to provide the best quality data. And we still need it in this era of big data where every time you go on Facebook, every time you use whatever social media, someone somewhere is tracking 100 different metrics about who you are? Well, big data is providing us with a great opportunity to understand populations and understand consumers. But the truth is, if I had 50,000 likes on Facebook last week, is that a good thing or a bad thing? What happens is when we combine social data and transactional data and uh, loyalty program data with good quality sen census data, it's like the census is the denominator. It grounds us. It enables us to look at whether that's a good thing or a bad thing for a brand, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing for a hospital. So the census is what allows us to use other data in a normative context and make other data useful to all kinds of communities. Understood. That's Jan Kessel, founder and president and Veronics Analytics. Thanks, Jan. Thanks for having me. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supportTVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.